I grew up in a home that did not go to church. My dad drank. I had a major social problem, and I thought I was ostracized. I had made a decision that I didn't like me, and others didn't like me, and so I would show my worth through work. The job that I had is what introduced me to drugs. By January the next year, I got arrested. I was absolutely miserable. I hated life, I hated myself. I started attending a church service in the jail. I heard some truth that I'd never heard in my life. When we got down to the principle of design, that's when it clicked. When we think about our less than ideal features, the conclusions we come to can easily steer our life in an undesirable direction, causing us to go places we never wanted to go, do things we never wanted to do, and become things we never wanted to be. So I grew up um, in a home that did not go to church. My dad drank and went to school, played some sports when I was young. And then, as I had mentioned, when I turned 13, um, I had a major social problem, and I thought I was ostracized. When I had that problem that I had mentioned when I was 13, and I felt like I lost my friends and those kind of things, that really affected my grades. I was an A student in math in sixth grade, and in seventh grade, I was a D. And so I was struggling. I had made a decision that I didn't like me, and others didn't like me. And so I would show my worth through work and through acquired things. I thought I always had to do more, 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 more to be accepted. The job that I had is what introduced me to drugs. And I did drugs for about 12 to 15 years. And eventually um, I got married and had two kids at that time and everything really blew up. I was absolutely miserable. I hated life, I hated myself, and then it seemed like things got worse because then by January the next year I got arrested for things that I had done during my addiction. And so on top of all this and the strain on my marriage and my kids, now I'm incarcerated and I didn't think things could get any worse. Unbeknownst to Carl, the problems that began to manifest in his life were simply the products of a deeper issue. What was that issue? In the following diagram, we will identify it after observing several layers of its effects in a life. The first layer is the outward, visible actions of a person. We will call these the fruit problems. Here, we might see a person struggling with self-criticism, withdrawal, dishonesty, debt, or bad habits. But where do these outward problems come from? Going one layer down, we find the shoe problems, or the underlying attitudes of a person. On this layer, we might see inferiority, insecurity, worry, or jealousy. But these underlying attitudes are still not the source of someone's problems. These quote shoots grew out of something else. What was it? This brings us to the roots, or the heart level of a person. Here we find deep-seated problems that, if present, begin characterizing our very existence. If we want to overcome the surface problems that are afflicting our life, these root issues must be addressed. They need to be overcome. But how? A couple weeks later, I started attending a church service in the jail. And so 25 days later, um, I heard some truth that I'd never heard in my life. And I gave my life to Christ. And so it's, I was still working through a lot of things. When I gave my life to Christ in 98, um, I had peace, I had forgiveness, but it didn't come to the point of uh, still liking me. When we talked about living out surface problems, that's what I've been living all these years. And honestly, it seems like I kind of forgot about the original problem of not liking me in a sense and just started living out problems. Learning how to get down to this root problem 
It came out in three different ways, in bitterness, uh, a temporal value, and moral impurity. I was living in the temporal. If we shut out God's influence on our life, we will be characterized by at least one of these things. A resentment toward others, bitterness, a materialistic focus, temporal values, or a sensual, lust-centered existence, moral impurity. If any of these things define our character, we can expect an ongoing supply of fruit problems. But if we want these root problems to cease, along with their byproducts, all it takes is an open heart to God and adhering to how He designed life to work in the first place. When we got down to the principle of design, that's when it clicked. God made me, and He made me the way He wanted me to be, and He makes the changes in His life that He wants. And I was caught up into things that we can't change. Physical, height, uh, those kind of things, aptitude, and that's when it tore down a huge wall in my life. God made me, and I, I could get along with it, you know, my little idiosyncrasies that we all have in those things. Uh, I had peace with it. And so it took that work thing, and for what? I'm already, God already made me his child. According to the principal design, if there's purpose, there's value, you're important to your family, you're important to where you work, you're important in the body of Christ.